They could also think of misspelling. We could also talk about speaking inaudibly. We could even talk about wrong pronunciations. Misspelling. The last time I checked, if you are one of the difficult things about this lady is that the spellings of her name. Swasnega keke wofa. If you are not careful, the way you write it. So I've developed a style for it. What I'll do is if I'm spelling Swasnega, I'll write school. Then I'll cancel this. I'll add war. Then what would I add? Zenega. Even Arnold Swasnega, the one who acts the movie. Or the one who acted, I think now he's out, whether he's still doing it. His son has graduated from college recently, and they said he was there to, I mean, grace the occasion. So, I'm not Swasnega. Swasnega, they're spelling. So, if you are writing Swasnega and you spell it differently, apart from this, then what you are doing is technical noise, wrong spelling. Even the word misspelling, the word misspelling itself, many people write just one S. Could you imagine that people write grateful this way, especially senior high school students? Some people even write whilst this word. They are all unacceptable. And when you misspell a word in your communication, as you write it, what are you doing? You have what you call technical noise. Technically, technically, it's a technical noise. That is why when they are marking your essays, senior high school students, junior high school students, we have even the university, they have what they call mechanical accuracy. Mechanical accuracy. Many a time, some teachers write just MA. And if you are not careful, you see C, O, E, and then MA. C means content, O, organization, expression, mechanical accuracy. If you see MA, you will think MA means mechanical advantage. Minya. And yes, I so. We are bro. Hmm? Mechanical accuracy. How accurate are you mechanically? Your spellings, your grammar. All these form part of technical noise. So if you cannot spell words correctly, even dormitory is a difficult word for some of us in terms of its spellings. So misspelling is also a technical noise. Speak it inaudibly. Just imagine that you've lost your voice and you're talking to someone. And as you are speaking, the person will not hear. And that all. When that happens, can you come again? Pardon? Sorry? He wants you to say it again. Recapitulate what you said. Because the person has not heard what you said. Technical noise. What about wrong pronunciation? Wrong pronunciation. Just imagine this word. See, this word is either a noun or a verb. And if it is a noun, you don't say address. Can you send me your email address? It's wrong. When you say address, you mean the verb. When Mahama is speaking to people, he's addressing them. When Akufuado is speaking to people, he addresses them. So, when you say address, it's the verb. So you don't say give me your email address, give me your postal address. It's wrong. So the pronunciation alone, it's a problem. Technical noise. If we are talking about the noun, as in postal address or email address, then you should say that give me your postal address. Address is the noun. Can you send me your email address? Can you send me your postal address? That is the noun. Then the verb is address. The same thing happens to the word redress. Redress. Now, redress. Verb. Could you imagine this word? I'm sorry. But this word is not penis. Excuse me to say this. It's penis. Penis. That is the pronunciation of the word. A boom see both roads. A guy was going to buy this thing.
At other times, it's written as this. So he told them, Ma, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to Meanwhile, the guy was looking at the puff loaf in the sea. But because it says puff loaf, I'm not confused. Technical noise. But I can see both roots. 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 The pronunciation. Puff loaf. And are you aware that this word? This word is different from that word. This is rhetorical. So in literature, we say rhetorical question. Questions that are not meant to be answered. Rhetoric. This one is rhetoric. Or we say rhetoric. 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 But that is rhetorical. You see the pronunciation? Do you remember the last time we were doing orals? London is the capital of Britain. London is the capital of Britain. If you are not careful, you run away from the room. You don't know what is happening. So you see, pronunciation, pronunciation is technical noise if it is pronounced wrongly. And we gave some examples. So from today forward, don't say, give me your email address. Say, give me your email address. Give me your postal address. All right. I remember when we were in school and a friend of mine was asked to mention this word. Or if you like this one. My friend confidently said prologue. And he also said monologue. My brother, monologue. Because of the pronunciation, people are wondering what is he talking about? Now, what is he saying? This one is not even funny. The other one has to do with this one. Maybe he's the only person who thinks he knows the Bible, so he knows Noah. He said Noah days. So you see Noah days, auntie. Bema. Noah days. The pronunciation affects the communication. Because when you say Noah days for this, the meaning is something else. The days of Noah. Instead of nowadays, technical noise. Sometimes it has to do with mistakes. Technical noise. Now, just imagine this word. Greed. And fresher. These words, sometime in the past, are wrong. When you, use, when you say fresher, someone who is new into an institution, whether a senior high school or the university, the tertiary, Oh, these are the, the freshest. Some time ago, these words are, are wrong. When you say that, you are wrong. You say freshman. To mean students who are new to an institution. They just came to the university. They are freshmen. So freshman for fresher. Because the point is, in grammar, you don't add S to an adjective and make it and now, so fresh is the adjective. You have added this one. You are calling them freshes. Some time ago, it was wrong. Even the word greedy, greed, greediness. The noun of greedy, you know greedy, is adjective. But its noun form is greed. Greedy is adjective. Greed is a noun. So you say that the greed of some people the greed of others, but yen binumra ye onam hanum. Ya ka greediness, greediness, sa freshness, freshness, sa mabra ufono. So it's a much yet. Or Mr. Mupe say, you see word, Mr. So now, freshness is part of the Oxford Dictionary. Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. You can see freshness there as a word. Ya ka sa mabra ufono, abra ufono, much yet. And they are using it. Today, you can say greediness because it's been accepted. And you know when mistakes uh, are perpetual, when mistakes persist, they, they become used, they are used. We accept them, they become acceptable. So today, greediness and fresher are correct now. Today, they are acceptable. 
But for talkatives, we won't accept it. Even if it is 100 years, you ain't here to move that. Your teacher walks to the class and tell your colleague, I mean your class prefect, primary power, no say, write names of talkatives. Minuya, just a wuna wuye bemba. You are come to write names of people who are talking. And, you know, talkative is an adjective. Without the S, this is an adjective. So just like what we did to fresher, which is fresh adjective, we are adding S to this one to make it a noun. So names of talkatives. And remember, talkatives is not E-R, it is A-R. Some people say fundamental human rights. Then they write fundamental this way. Yeah, yeah, it's wrong. It's supposed to be A. So names of talk it's honest because this is a preposition. And after preposition, we expect to see a noun. So when you say names of talkatives, this talkative is an adjective. We are making it a noun. The correct one is that names of talkatives supposed to be names of talkers. People who like talking in class or whatever, whatever, they are called talkers. This, this boy is a talker. That lady is a talker. So if you don't want to say talker, then you say, so it means you say names of talkers. That is what you should write or say. Names of talkers. If it's not names of talkers, then you say that names of talkative students. Names of talkative students. So this one becomes names of talkative students. Why talkative student is our noun phrase coming after the preposition of object of the preposition. Names of talkative students. Talkative here is adjective and is describing the noun student. So you see that if you are using the wrong words in communication, there is technical noise. The last thing I will talk about under technical noise has to do with the songs that we have. Just recently, Shatawale came up with a jago, a, a word. He said, if you know you like SM, just say, pa, 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 pa. Even though we don't understand, we will say it and say it and say it because of the redeeming nature of pa, 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 pa. The word pa, 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 we don't understand it. Whether it is alliteration, assonance, or rhyme, or onomatopoeia, we don't understand it. But pa, pa, pa has gotten a rhythm that boys, fans, we love it. Then when Patapa heard this, he also came up with Tim Pato Pata, Sko Pato Mana, Tim I mean, all sorts of things. Minuya, you love the song, but ask yourself, what is the meaning of Tim Pato Pata, Sko Skato Mana, Eno Dada? All these things don't have meaning. But because of the, I mean, the redeeming nature of it, it's music, so we are taking it like that. But the communication here, technically, is a noise. Because once you are saying it and we don't understand, it's a noise. It's just like someone who is speaking jargons, using big, big words on people. When you do that, and you know in communication, if the one who you are talking to doesn't understand what you are saying, communication does not take place. So, timpa to pata, skos katomana, inoni si dada, all these things, dada, na, na, na. Even patapa, his name, his name is even onomatopoeia. He's the only singer whose name is Asunas, whose name can also be Rhyme. Because Pata Pa, just listen to the name Pa Ta. Pa. So the name is Onomatopoeia. The name, you know, because of Pa A A, we also say it's Asunas. Then because of the P P, we also say it's alliteration. Pa, we also say it's rhyme. Nipa bakupeu. Just imagine the kind of education he has given Ghanaians. And today, there are students who, uh, this, uh, they don't, they can't even solve it. The thing is difficult. But today, Patapa have schooled uh, most of the youth in Ghana. Now we have a penna, or Bapa, Tim Pato Pata, Skos Katumana. Steve Zidada, or a mistake, or best shining in Anna or Befa social media. 
status no aka ni nyina hwe juma wa ma people love the song and it is technical noise because you don't understand the there 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 na wo mu just imagine sakwa the performing in uh, south africa or nigeria and he's speaking chi you realize that what you will be saying they will not understand it there i don't think we will be performing songs that are chi more of chi there yes they may like the rhythm but because of the language so sakwa there is in nigeria you know as to say we are seeing more dem brain so still me put them come pet 20 mil me nya dan one room o ma kata he na po say obi o be bo me na me nya me dele me o me pe ka totokra nya na e na wi aso di nsogun ketse mo anya ma e no ameti me didi me bo ma sada ka pre me ni ba won se ka nya me ada roma oh this the guy say is sensible i love sago there so much I, the, the kind of raps he will give you just say it is it is scholarly scholarly rap the point is as is performing this in Ghana we love it but let him try it in Nigeria no matter the sense is making they would understand so to them it is technical noise because of the language there is this guy in Nigeria called Fino the guy can rap let him he, most of his rap when he bring it to Ghana here we wouldn't understand it because he will, he also does what we call code mixing and code switching he will speak english once and the yoruba will continue whether the igbo or the yoruba will continue like that technical noise ganiers we don't understand so you see find yourself in an environment where they are not good at this language they don't understand this language and you are speaking in that language technical noise when this guy started at them hello this guy was rapping and people be chastising why are your friends are rapping in english why would you? my brother if you get an ever ever or a, a, a vegetarian to explain what this guy is saying is rap you will nail down and and, and you, in fact you, you fall flat for ever he's making sense but because you are not an ever you are not a vegetarian and you don't understand it it's just like this guy in the north um what is the name uh fancy gadam fancy gadam is performing very well in the north you go to the north and see he is the god there but if he's performing here somewhere if you don't understand the language you think oh now what is he trying to say technical noise and even this guy um manifest manifest will be rapping and the way he will be slanging it will be technical noise to some people so i remember one of his raps when he came to k university republic or he said i remember when i go there to, when i go sport there for report he's rapping and he will be slanging into yeah yeah we all know the normal english when it's language we don't understand we don't understand so that way that particular person who thinks that what he say he doesn't understand he can hear things is technical noise so you see technical noise has to do with you say something and people do not understand it's one of the examples technical noise this is all about barriers in communication we talked about distortion we are now on noise and we look at the type of noise we talked about physical noise we talked about social noise we talked about psychological noise and we are also ending with technical noise that is all under noise let us now consider communication in an organization communication in an organization the first one has to do with downward communication what do we mean by downward communication we are talking about communication from the boss communication from the director communication from the ceo chief executive officer communication from the manager straight to the subordinates subordinates or members or workers 
information that will come from the boss, the top, to the secretary, or the bankers, or whatever, the workers, the members, is tapped as downward communication. Your boss, the secretary, writes a minute of the meeting we'll be having, the child. So the boss serves as a chairman at the meeting. He's telling one of the subordinates to serve as a secretary. He's telling a subordinate to go and do this or go do that. He's sending you on errands. The communication, the speech he's making, is going to the subordinates. So it is called downward communication from the top to the down. Many a time, people feel that downward means it is rather going to the top. No, downward communication is from top to the down, from your boss to you yourself. If it is not verbal or oral, it could also be written. So if a letter comes from your boss's office, from your director's office, from the manager's office, from the CEO's office to your desk, that written something, that letter, that memo, that whatever, rejoinder, that proposal, whatever, which is coming to you, the workers, is termed downward communication. Then, in replying to your boss, In replying to your boss, this time, the communication is going up there. So from the subordinate, from the workers, from the members, to the boss, to the director, to the manager, to the CEO. The communication is from them to the top. Maybe it's a complaint. Maybe it's a request. It's a permission. Whatever information that will pass from the subordinates to those at the top of, I mean, the hierarchy, the manager is termed upward communication. Communication is from the subordinates up there to your boss. When you are talking to your boss, you speak in humility. You speak in respect. You speak in all innocence. So, subordinate to the director, to the manager. Upward communication. Then, we have the third one, which is called horizontal. Horizontal communication. We are talking about communication that follows this pattern. We are talking about directors here. Yeah? We are talking about managers. We are talking about CEOs. We are talking about uh, how do you call it? Manager, director, CEO. We are talking about bosses. In fact, equal status. Or if you like, position. Others may call it class. We are of the same class. I remember when Stephen Appiah, our very captain of Black Star some time ago, was hanging his boot. And he organized a ceremonial match at Accra Sports Stadium. He invited big men in the system. So we had... Think tanks like Mahama, big men like Rollins, big men like, I mean, name them. So, I remember that there at the stadium, it was uh, former president Rollins and former president Kufuo who were there before Mahama came. And you know, Mahama was the then president. When he came, the two of them, former presidents Kufuo, and Rollins stood up for him. When they stood up, they allowed Muhammad to sit first. When Muhammad sat, they also sat down. Then they were having a conversation. This conversation is among people of equal status, former presidents and the current president. Equal status. Could you imagine the conversation that exists between, uh, if you are fan of Game of Thrones, the current movie in the system, that everybody is, Scene. Game of Thrones. 
my teacher told me that in his days, what they asked themselves as colleagues is, what new book have you read? Oh, this one said, I read Things Fall Apart. I read uh, The Man of the People. And they are, if you have not read that, you go and look for the book and read to challenge your friend. Today is about what movie have you seen currently? Oh, I've seen Game of Thrones. I've seen Avengers. I've seen, uh, how do you call it? Fast and Furious, season 8, season 7. No, the year guy, guy. Movies, you hear the year guy, guy. Bema. Game of Thrones, season 7. One of the episodes, um, Queen Daenerys and his, her entourage, sorry, Jon Snow. They went to Queen Cersei in, uh, how do you call it, King's Landing. They went and met her so that they could have a camaraderie. They would have an agreement to fight the army of the dead. There, at that juncture, they were all sitting. It is a meeting of think tanks, meeting of queens and kings, big men. Whatever conversation, whatever communication existed among these queens and kings is horizontal communication. Because it is communication among people of equal class, equal status. And it should not be conclusive that horizontal communication is about people of equal class, as in those at the top. It could also be those at the down. I was talking about former presidents Rollins and Kufour, and the president as of that time, when Mahama was the president, they attended, in fact, they graced the occasion for Stephen Apia. When they were discussing as big men, the players on the pitch are also discussing. So the communication that exists among the big men is horizontal. The very communication that exists among the players on the pitch is also what? Horizontal. So it could be those at the down, it could be those at the top. It could be those at the apex, it could also be those at the bottom. So communication to be horizontal, we are talking about communication among equal states. Then we have the last one, which is stepped at diagonal. Diagonal communication. What do we mean by diagonal communication? We are talking about communication which is not horizontal but a bit slant. So if you are a worker in a bank, we have Tela 1, Tela 2, Tela 3, uh, Tela 3, sorry. <laughs> yeah, tela 3, Tela 3. Paralam, that is it. And it's called what? Technical noise. Or if you like, someone can call it physical noise because of the RL. Yeah. Tela 3, Tela 4, Tela 5. They are of equal status. So the conversation, the communication among these five tellers is horizontal. But the communication between a teller, the accountant, and the receptionist is what? Diagonal. Because the teller, one, is an accountant, is a banker. And the one at the receptionist is not of equal status with the banker, the accountant, the teller. So we call this diagonal. We are working at a commercial bank. All of us are working at Unibank. All of us are working at, uh, how do you call it? UN Bank. Name them. Barclays Bank. But the point is that, level Kakrawo, no wonder Shatawale will tell you that I know my level. I know my level because he thinks that among all the musicians in the world, he is the one with swag. Those in Ghana and Africa, he is the one with swag. So he says, I know my level. He said he has three houses at Trasaco. So he thinks he has his level. So, even though they are doing the same music, Patapa cannot be compared to Satawale. Because level Kakrao, they are all musicians. But level um, I remember when this same Satawale visited uh, President Nana Kuwaro. Yes, Satawale is famous. But is he of equal class with uh, the president, no, they may be friends, but the point is, he is the number one gentleman of the land. Nana, you are a musician, you are also up there. But the point is, on no president, level Kakra no wonder some people will tell you that a friend will be our the master. And no matter your level, another, another person is also having his level. So, President Akufuado meeting with or Shatawale meeting with Aku, uh, President Akufuado is diagonal. Because he's the president, this person is also there, but 
Kakra, let go kakra wo. Then you can even think about your manager who is speaking to a director somewhere. But he's or let's say even lecturers, for example. Lecturers in the some of them are doctors. Some are professors. So this is a professor, that is a doctor. Another one is holding an MPhil. Level Kakra. So you are a, 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 a lecturer, you don't have a PhD. Someone is even a professor. Communicating to the professor, just a level Kakra. So even though you are both lecturers, it's diagonal because who book a cra aman. That 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 respect is there. That that level is there. And we term that as what? Diagonal communication. You are a receptionist. Someone is the banker. Muni now you are working at the bank. But that is he maybe even the receptionist, you are SHS graduate, and the banker may even be holding a PhD. Difference room. So I know my level. Diagonal communication. Lovely viewers, this is where we end our studies in communication in an organization. Talking about downward communication from the boss to the subordinates. Just imagine Abramovich, who is the coach, sorry, the manager of Chelsea, and is speaking with the whole team, the football team. He's coming from the boss himself to the players or even the manager. What are you talking about? Mauricio Sarri meeting with his boss, the manager, Abramovich, difference room. So you see that the boss to the subordinates, the, uh, downward, upward. The players, some time ago in Chelsea, it's believed that Mourinho didn't like this guy. What is the name? I don't, there's this particular guy called Shevchenko when he came from AC Milan to Chelsea. They said he was a friend to Abramovich. So whatever happens at the training grounds, it reports to him directly. Now, the footballer Shevchenko is communicating with Abramovich. It is what? Upward communication from the subordinate, the player, to the manager. Then we have horizontal. The team coach, Mauricio Sarri, who is the current coach of Chelsea and his staff, when they are meeting, it is what? Horizontal. Just imagine teachers having their staff meeting. All of them are one. So, horizontal communication. Diagonal. We are working at the same place. We are The conversation we are having, we are of the same class. But, the Bible will tell you that iron sharpened iron. Which means that they be that they be. Some is stronger than the other. Some have some high status than the other. And we term that as what? Diagonal communication. Thank you very much for your time, your patronage and attention. I'm grateful.